I built a cell phone jail for my teenager's phone to lock it up. And it looks amazing, but it's also the most high-tech thing I have ever built. But that didn't come without a lot of struggles. And I had to pull in help on a couple different occasions. This walnut is really old. It's been sitting in a barn for like 50 or 60 years and I got it off of Craigslist a few years back. A lot of it is pretty nasty and it's got a lot of sapwood to it, but the color is absolutely amazing. I think it's gonna be perfect for this project. After all the milling, these came in right under 5 eighths of an inch around 15 millimeters for all my metric friends. But uh, I had to take off quite a lot because, you know, there was lots of barn poop on there. Wano, hello. So it's a little bit smaller than I was hoping for and hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt later. But these things do look amazing. There is so much character and the color is gonna be awesome. So now I could go ahead and start gluing together some of these panels. Now, these small little glue ups are gonna be for the bottom and the shelves. And so I was able to use some of the really nasty wood for this bottom piece. And the nicer, more clear stuff will be for the sides and the front panels. And the panels turned out great and I just knocked down the seam with a little card scraper and oh, that is satisfying. But you might be thinking, hey Brad, I didn't see you blew up that second long panel. And you'd be right because this is the shape for the side and because it's angled, and I thought, oh, I could just turn it around and fit two just like that. And that was all great until I realized that that would give me two left sides and not a right side and the back of this is kind of nasty and I didn't want to use it, so I had to glue up another panel. You know, I like to kind of get my mistakes out of the way early so I can really pump up that mistakes were made count. But it's all right, it happens to the best of us. So right now I'm gonna go start cutting these out of these two panels. All right, I went ahead and cut all the sides down, and yes, I do have a right side and a left side. I used my tapering jig on the table saw to make these cuts and make them exactly the same. And while I was at it, I also cut all the pieces that are gonna go down in the center. So we'll have a little bottom there, we're gonna have a little lower piece, and so this will all fit together a little something like a de Oh, not like that. <laughs> or like that. <laughs> Something a little bit like this, and then a little control panel. Then I'll have a hinge door on the front that will hold the bars. And this is just gonna be a little cavity down here that's gonna hold some of the electronics. Just got a few spacers in here right now that will hold up the shelf. So then we'll have the shelf that will go right on top here, and then, boom, just like that. So this is where it's gonna be, and then the chargers will sit right here. So now what I need to do is uh, the control panel that's gonna be up here, that's gonna have a little digital timer that's gonna have a countdown of when the lock will unlock. That's gonna be super cool. Can't wait to show you that. But what I need to do right now is uh, get an angle right here so that this will all mesh together. Now all I have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem, which we know is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then we can get the covector of the tangential line. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna use the line and tilt the blade until it hits the line. Oh, <laughs> the joys of working with nasty old barn wood. Uh, after I made that cut, Here's what I found. That is a bark inclusion, and that would be right at the very top and probably the most conspicuous part of the entire project. So I think we need some help. Norm, what do I do, man? If you could send some of your practical wisdom through this picture into my workshop, I would appreciate it. Tell me what I should do. Help me, Norm. Brad, just cut a new one. Thank you. And before I start joining this together, I need to prepare this little bottom shelf for the electronic lock. So this is a little solenoid lock, and this is just a little baby thing. <laughs> it looked a lot bigger on the screen. 
I'm hoping this is gonna work. Some of the reviews we're talking about, it was not very strong. But I need it to be sitting under this bottom shelf with just a little uh, latch piece up above. So I'm gonna lay out for it and cut out a little square so that I can put it in there. All right, I went at this thing with the chisel and uh, I am maybe the world's second worst chiseler. Um, I don't know who the worst is, but it's not me. But <laughs> this is fitting in here real nice now. So that'll work great when I go to install it. And now I know where the floating tenons can go to make sure they don't get in the way. I'm using floating tenons to assemble this, AKA dominoes, but you don't need a domino to cut them. There are some cheaper alternatives like the Tian Li or the Comax. So if you've not seen this, I did a video talking about these and these can cut the same slots that the domino does. So check out that video if you haven't yet. So now I can just slide these together and start getting a feel for what this is really going to look like. And the nice part is with these floating tenons, I can knock it down and I know I'm going to have to take this thing apart a few times as I'm fitting in all the electronics. Let's put this other side on. <laughs> oh yeah, this thing is looking awesome. Oh man, I love this. So now that I have this in place, I can fit for the door because I want to get this all assembled and make sure that I get the door sized exactly right. But before I do that, I want to show you guys how the lock works and start getting into some of the electronics. Here is the base of the whole locking system that I'm starting with. And basically my whole goal is to turn on and off this little solenoid. And you can do that really easy or you can make it really hard and have other things happen too. <laughs> but right now I'm gonna be driving that off of a little Arduino Nano and that is a small microcontroller which is basically just a little tiny computer that runs code. It looks for inputs and then does outputs. So it says, you do this, I'll do that. So I just put a little bit of code on here now to say that when I push this button, send the electrical signal to this relay which will then power up the solenoid. So if I push the button, it opens for one second. That's just fun to do. So you could leave it at that and just have one button and be able to push it and have it open. But because we want to add in a lot more things and have a timer and also have some LEDs and have it do all kinds of fun stuff, we need to have the microcontroller. Now an automated lock isn't going to do me any good unless I have a door to put it on. So I'm going to build that next. I've got the frames now and they are mitered up and I am going to be gluing these together, but uh, I wanted to put some little bars in there to really make it look like a jail. So I drilled holes on the top and the bottom about an inch apart and that is going to be for these brass bars here and actually brass tubes. But uh, I think this is going to look really cool. Let's see here. Let's see if this will work out. Then these are too tall at the moment. I have to cut them to size. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that looks good. Oh, that's perfect. I was hoping they'd be narrow enough that uh, you can't quite fit your fingers through there. That is so cool. I swear, Dad, I wasn't on the cell phone. I feel like the bars are a little yellow, so I went ahead and hit one with uh, bar helper, bar, bar keepers helper, bar helper, bar keepers, bar keeper helper. I polished it and got rid of all the, the junk and the oxidation off it. So I'm going to hit the rest of them, cut them to size, and then get them in here. And then what I need to do is put in the little hinge that's going to be on top. So there's going to be a hidden hinge on the top and then the underside of the little control panel. And then after I get that, then I can put the latch on the bottom for the lock. What? You've never seen a man polish his brass tubes before? Before I put the door together, I'm gonna to put the hinges in. I'm using these little concealed hinges. These are really cool, and I think it's gonna be a neat look on there. So I did a little practice cut on this little test piece here, and it fits pretty good. Good enough where I think I can go ahead and attack these and get them cut, and then I can start assembling everything, and uh, yeah. Hopefully this looks great. I don't know how this is actually gonna work, so <laughs> we'll find out.
All right, I got the hinges in there and they turned out pretty good. Some little gaps here and there, but check this out. I put the top on here. There we go. And so as it's sitting there, then you can just open the front. Whoop. How cool is that? These invisible hinges are pretty neat. I went ahead and put some finish on the inside of this door before I put it together because it will be nearly impossible to put it on once these bars are in here. I'm just going to start stacking these in here and then uh, see how it goes together because I can't fold it up like I normally would since uh, the top and the bottom are going to be locked. Just a touch more. All right, I think that will do it. Let's get some glue. Oh, this door turned out so cool. Look at that. That is just awesome. All right, so now I need to figure out how I'm going to interact with the lock here. So I'm gonna get this lock installed on the base here. Then I'm gonna to have to bevel the lower end of this door so that it will sit flush on that angle. And then we can figure out how the lock goes in here. Now, even though this lock is just a little baby lock, this whole thing is just kind of for fun. It's more of just a visual place where we can put our phones. And quite honestly, I think Susan and I will probably use it as much as the kids do. Just to have a place to put your cell phone away and kind of get away from digital life and stop recording videos. Ah, <laughs> this material is so thin and this lock is so small. I need some really tiny screws. And so I've got this little bin and I don't know, am I the only one that has a bin like this? These are just all the random screws from like installation kits and hardware that uh, are just onesie twosies. And no matter how many you're looking for, you can always find that minus one. So if you just need one, you won't find it. But if you need four, you'll find three. <laughs> I know you're in there somewhere. <gasps> Found it. All right, it's put back together. Now this is the moment of truth. I did install the hinges and now I could put them in here and we'll see what the fit is like. All right, I made this a really tight fit, so <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't scrape. Let's see how it works. Well, it fits side to side. It's not racked. And I can just bevel the underside of that to get it to lay flush. All right, after a few cuts, a little bit of rubbing on the sides. You can sand that down, but <laughs> that is looking awesome. Check this out. Jail cell. <laughs> okay, as I try to figure out this lock, I'm realizing this is playing out very differently than I thought. I had this little piece here that I was going to attach. This is clearly way too big and, you know, that's just gonna hit right back in there. Uh, I don't know if I can modify this. I'm kind of thinking I'm just gonna maybe make a little latch out of wood. I wanna put some things together and uh, see what we can figure out. All right, if my bench is any indication, <laughs> I have been hard at work at this. And this is what I came up with, which is, uh, just a little wooden lock that's gonna go on the back of this and I'm gonna drill it in. Um, and I probably used like seven or eight tools just to make this. And I know a wooden latch is not the best, so I can always put a little piece of metal in here if it starts wearing out. Let me see if this latches in. Now this does need to be tightened a little bit, but the lock is working. I've got a little fix on that latch that is drying right now, but I want to show you guys what I've been doing with the electronics. <laughs> it has gotten a little out of control here. Now, the whole idea of the cell phone jail is we're going to have a timer, so I've added in a little LCD here and then buttons and little knobs here to make everything work. And I am not a coder. I did not figure this out on my own. A big thank you to Lucien Blankavort. He's got a project called the Time Delay Lockbox, and it was on Instructables, and I found it there and I used his code as the basis for the timer and to make everything work. I had to change around a lot of stuff. Now I'm just moving around wires, trying to get stuff to work, and I kind of felt like Grogu trying to fix the Mandalorian ship. No, don't, don't put the blue one back. Put the red one where the blue one was. No, hold them apart. <laughs> But I've been working on this behind the scenes and I have put in at least 40 hours worth of work into the coding and the arrangement and everything. 
All right, so let me show you how it works. If I push the set button right here, it says set, and then I can spin this little rotary knob here and it will count up. And then to arm it, I can push this next little button. It's gonna flash for a second and then the countdown is going to start. And then you can't unlock that until the countdown is done. So if I try to unlock that, nothing happens. But if I wait until it's done and I push that, it will unlock. But now I've got to take this big jumble pile of wires and make it look nice. So I'm going to put the LCD and all the buttons up here on the control panel, get that all in and figure out how to get everything wired inside there. Plus, I'm going to add a few more bells and whistles to really make this thing awesome. I know I'm a perfectionist, so doing something like designing the front of a control panel is something that I will spend hours <laughs> and hours and hours on. From designing it on the software program to doing the CNC cutouts and tests, and then going over to the laser for the engraving and making sure that the font is right and the size and all that. But I am extremely happy how this ended up turning out. I've got all the holes cut in here, ready for all the different buttons, and you'll see what all these little things mean in just a little bit. I also had to CNC out the back here to fit all the controls and things because of the thickness of the wood. But I tell you what, this is looking great, and now I'm ready to assemble. I used a ton of different tools, hardware, and supplies to make this project, and I got a lot of those at Woodcraft, who's the sponsor of today's video. They are a woodworking supply and hardware store. They have everything from the tools that I use to make all my cuts and joinery to the hardware like the invisible hinges and the finishing supplies to make it all look amazing. They have over 70 stores around the US that you can go check out, but if you don't have one near you, you can go to woodcraft.com and pick up anything you need there. So for your next woodworking project, go check out Woodcraft, and thank you to Woodcraft for being an awesome sponsor of the channel. Oh, how can I glue up this small? It could be so stressful. All right, we're all sanded up, and now I'm gonna apply some oil-based finish, and it's really gonna make this walnut pop. All right, the finish on this turned out absolutely amazing. It is looking great. I got the door reinstalled. I also cut a little panel in here, and this is going to go uh, right in front here, and then the phone charger will be sitting here and then all the electronics are gonna be in the back. But now I've got this big jumbled mess of wires so I can start filling everything in the control panel and then I'll show you all the little goodies that I added to it. Now the challenge is gonna be rewiring this because these are all really short wires and I'm gonna need some longer wires. I'm still gonna keep this on breadboard which is fairly temporary and I'm gonna convert it to a smaller one though because a lot of these things that are in the board down here are gonna be going up into the console so it should shrink everything. But I've only done this one or two times before so I'm just gonna get going and we'll see what happens. This turned out so awesome. I absolutely love how this looks. It's like a retro feel to it. And the walnut and the brass just feels something straight out of DIY perks. Matt over there is awesome. And actually he's been a huge inspiration for me into wanting to get into more electronics. So go check him out if you haven't yet. And working with electronics is something I've been really interested in for a while now, and I wanna do more of it on the channel. So let me know down below if this is something you like, and if you wanna see me go into more detail on some of the things here. But it is really fun, and uh, you get to buy a whole lot of new tools other than woodworking. Everything's ready to be transferred over, and I'll just hook it up, and we'll take it for a run. All right, I've got it all set up here. Now we're gonna bring down my son, Cole. And he's gonna see it for the first time. Turn around right here. Check out my latest project. What? This, is this like a prison for your cell phone? That Why? is exactly what it is. Yes. So here's how it works. While the light's green, you yeah. can just open it. Wait, that's actually so cool. Hold on. This kind of reminds me of like that one scene from, the home, from home Alone with the furnace. So I try to open it when it's locked. All right. Whoa, 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 dude. I gotta try to open it. Please do not do that. <laughs> try to open it like a normal person. Okay. If we wanna put it overnight, we'll hit the set. We can put that to how many ever hours we need and then arm.
It's the Mario Kart intro, dude. Oh! <laughs> Wait, but why? Why like, what? You, you could have just like checked my search history or something and said you made this. That's right. So now, you can't open it. But I don't know, try to open it anyway. <laughs> no! <laughs> what is wrong we, uh, we with you? We noped him. So if they try to get in early, he just hits the nope. Yep. Uh, See, the lock is controlled by electricity. So. But that would probably reset the timer. Plug it back in. Oh, no. Boot Ooh. up. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Built in to this is high security. So even if he unplugs it, he still can't get to the phone. There's only one way to get this thing back opened up. Oh, that no. Is dad power. Well, you guys were watching. I built in an override to the side with RFID. Uh. <gasps> Once we get under a minute, now it goes into seconds and it will count down for the seconds. All right, here we go. Get the final opening. Okay, is it gonna say something? To Seriously. <laughs> Mario! Mario, what up? <laughs> <laughs> and now, it is openable again. I mean, on one hand, it's cool, but my question stays, why? If you wanna see more videos that make your kids say why, there's a playlist oh right over my son's face. What? <laughs>